Today I wanted to take a quick look at this Ego 30 minute charger. It is a model number CH5500 550 watt charger and this one is having some issues charging where it tries to charge the pack and then it gives a pack error no matter how many good packs I try to, I try to charge it shows like a pack error. If I put the pack in this is a known good uh, two and a half amp hour. It'll go through and uh, try to check the pack. The fans are running. So we know that our power supply at least has some buses working. We know our CPU is actually working at least to some degree. It's just, it's not like it's not showing any lights or um, that it's just showing a fault immediately. It is going through and trying to monitor. So we do have some operation of the pack. And after it picks up the level, and this battery is really low, so I think that's actually right. It's about 51 volts on this pack. So I picked it for that reason. Now right here, I tried to kick in and charge and it gave a fault. So it does show like defective pack. If I go through and test, for example, with a larger a 5.0 amp hour battery that is charged, we know that the monitoring software and, and uh, processors are all working pretty good because it did truly show that we have 100% on this battery. So this may actually be a difficult repair just due to the fact that it's actually all working. It's not going to probably be a, just a bus or a bulge cap or anything like that. But the next step, I'm going to take out eight of these T15 security screws. We'll be right back. All right, back now with the eight screws removed. First peek inside here. Pretty neat vents. Almost looks like a one-sided power supply board, like old cheap TV board or anything, but I'll be surprised if it's not dual-sided because I don't see the processor and no surface mount stuff yet. Although it's unplugged, I just gotta be careful. Um, some of these caps may not be completely drained down. So after giving it a few minutes, after being unplugged, I'm going to try to um, undo this cable right here going to the, the charging terminals. There we go. So that's pretty neat. We could actually take, it's like a fan shroud or ducking and um, four screws and we can take that connector out. That's neat. So we do have two different fans. I'm going to take three more screws out. We'll be right back. So back now with all four of the board screws removed. Pay attention to this fan's direction. And we can unplug it and get it out of the way. Unplug this fan. The lower. Um, so that's actually your battery cooling fan. And this one looks like it was the electronic, the switch mode power supply cooling fan. Okay, well that pops right off so we ain't got to take the ribbon loose. Do our S wrap removal there. And as suspected, ooh, it's got the conformal coating on it too, which is which is good because I got mine mounted on the garage wall. But it's gonna really suck for probing and trying to trying to test out. You know, after looking over this board, I saw no issues, obvious, but the cool thing is in electronics, sometimes when a trace blows, you actually have a visual indicator that shows up on the housing before you can see it on the board. And I did overlook that, but we do have a spot right here that oddly enough isn't very obvious, but it looks like a trace. I'll get an up close view here, but it looks like the trace blue coming from that may just be a jumper maybe. It don't go to the other side, so so that is just a, a trace coming from that jumper and going across to a zero ohm resistor so interesting so a closer look with the microscope we see the trace there blown away we see that conformal coating kind of hindering some of the view there but we see that we got two different directions that trace went so we're definitely losing some uh, 
some path there. So the more and more we look at this board, it helps to really study it because to be honest, at first I was thinking that this trace probably went three or four ways and blew out. Just taking some time and looking at this, like this R39 marking and the little red glue dot show that for some reason they didn't populate some of these resistors. So even though the, the robot that picked in place, it did have the, uh, or rather the, the glue robot, I guess, that put the dabs of glue but the pick in place was designed or programmed not to load up, for example, this R39 or this R46. At first, I thought R46 was gone, and I was going to have to not only repair the trace, but find out what R46 was. But it looks like with that little bit of red glue left there, the way it was, it's still possible that there was one there, but I think it would have been flattened out. So with it being a red glue dot bulge, kind of like R39, and we had a, a diode here also that wasn't populated. We see some more around here too, like this one here wasn't populated. It's, a, um, it's also very obvious. So it looks like the repair for this is going to be to come across and jump I jump a wire from here over to this resistor R. Um, I think that's 83.0. Zero ohm jumper basically. So I can just come across here. And jump back to here. And I think that's all we need to do. To at least repair this part. Now if something else caused this. We'll have to figure that out. Um, with it being conformal coded. I doubt something came across it. And it could even be that this trace is very small. It could have been a design issue, but we'll see. I'll put a small jumper wire between these two. And we'll be right back. I have chipped off a lot of that uh, conformal coating around this spot. Just want to get a little solder pad here. Okay, I know that's overkill, but hey, we'll make sure it wasn't just a trace being too weak, huh? Not there anyway. Even though it's the same size going over over to here. So we have corrected this jumper, and that jumper zero that we're jumping to there. It's tough to get through the conformal coating. We do get our zero volts through that zero volt jumper. So we got continuity all the way through. And it goes up and the trace doesn't seem to be damaged here. But this is a 100 resistor. And we're reading over 400 ohms. So that resistor may have opened up. It should be 10 ohms. And then we're also going to a diode before we go to this, this transformer winding. We have a diode here. And that does show like a diode. Forward voltage. But it shows both ways. So I believe we got a bad diode and a bad resistor here in this network. Which may have been what took that um that trace out. With the diode. The diode may have took out this resistor. Surprisingly it left that zero on. But that zero ohm must have been a, a little bit tougher than the, the, the thin trace right here. So I'm going to take these off. We'll be right back. Well, 
I have this resistor and this diode is temporarily soldered on because I don't have any surface mount 10 ohm and surface mount diode. So that's just a temporary measure for troubleshooting. I don't think it's just the diode. The one I took off when I grabbed it with the tweezers it actually took off and I still have not found it yet. I think it hit the floor and it's so tiny I still hadn't found it. I wanted to take it off and check it but I took it off and uh, as soon as I went to pick it up it turned sideways and shot, shot out of the picture here. So it may have been that it wasn't nothing wrong with that original diode so I'm going to keep troubleshooting before I plug this in. So with the diode removed we still have our short. For some reason I swore I checked that earlier so we'll just keep on troubleshooting to see what else could be causing that. I did a really bad mistake troubleshooting. I didn't uh, I didn't double check that that wasn't where my short was coming from so we'll go to continuity check I knew when I removed my diode and resistor I was good here but I failed to go back and check and make sure I was good all the way through so when I put my circuit back in this is actually the so that's pretty simple and rookie mistake there so tracing back through I don't think anything's wrong with the way this jumper is it was quite uh, simple and straightforward but it got me looking more in this area of what may have caused this to blow off to start with right so checking around here and uh, these are two electrolytic caps which I don't even know if I mentioned on the video but I, I went through and looked at all the electrolytic caps and I actually saw uh, no issue with none of the caps as far as bulging uh, physically leaking and um, nothing to point towards a cap issue but we have this small small electrolytic here and here and this one is very unusual with no diode across it that I can see so I tried it both ways I still get a dead short and uh, the range of this capacitor should definitely be where this meter can read and, I, and I'm not showing any capacitance. So I'm going to clean uh, some more of this conformal coating off. And I'll pop that little top capacitor right there off. And we'll take another look. Where well, was that capacitor removed? We see that uh, we still have our issues. So it's still in the same bus. we got to trace it around. It actually wasn't the capacitor. So tracing this circuit around, we have a diode here. This diode right there. It shows shorted, so whether whether it's the diode or just the bus that's on, but I'm gonna clean this conformal coating off and just take one side of that diode loose and we'll check it then. So now if you can see that the P side of that diode is removed. I have pushed it through right there. I hadn't cleaned this up good, but I have pushed it through. I've taken time to clean these other spots up that I've I desoldered some stuff to make sure it was no residue there. So I cleaned those up. This one here, it's fairly clean, but uh, you can see the hole there. I need to clean it up some more, but get the meter where you can see it. Dough mode, it was shorted here on the pad. Now we're showing open. That's a good sign. So it, it definitely is this diode then. Let me go. Yep. Absolutely. So we should be clear now from where this jumper was and this trace that it blew off. Up. There we go. We're not dead shorted anymore.
awesome. All right, let's get that diode out of there. So there's that diode out. Definitely shorter. Look at there. All right, so we need another diode. So it's not pretty, but I have a diode mounted on this side. Because I actually do not have one the right size to be through hole. So just for testing purposes. Okay. So I need to order a shot key dough the right size. Because this, this is a shot key. So it should be like only 0.2 or so uh, forward voltage. So I just put this on here to really see if the short would go away. I'm going to put the... Uh, capacitor in this diode and resistor back on and be right back so back now with temporary repairs got a diode across here got that all cleaned up oh we actually got our capacitor back in here like it hadn't been removed got our trace repair our 10 ohm which that resistor was really bad because it was showing i believe 400 ohms or so it was showing high directly across it that wouldn't have changed no matter what was shorter than the circuit. That was showing high. And we have a diode here. And I, I don't know for sure. I don't believe that diode was bad even though it was showing short of the cross. Because it was going through this short here and coming back reading through. But either way I got to get a surface mount diode. And a surface mount 10 ohm. And I got to get a Schottky diode here. I think it's a 2 amp. Have to look that number up again. It's an SR2A. So I'm just going to um, clean some of this stuff up. I'm just going to lay this board back in here temporarily. Just to be as safe as I can. Just to check it before I put it back together. Because I want to do a check and make sure it's operational. But I'm not going to assemble it until I get my parts in. All right, just plug it in. We know we never were getting much output before out of this charger. I think we're actually charging now. I think we're showing 51 volts before. There we go. Just gonna bump it up to the third level. That's awesome. I'm excited about that. So I just got a few components to buy and put on. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this troubleshooting video today. And what it took to get this uh, Ego 30 minute charger back going. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe. And thanks for watching.